then. Welcome back to our final instalment of the exclusive interviews from It's Rich Fan Zone. It's been a real delight to speak to some of my childhood heroes and stars of the past, along with my fellow colleague Mark, We're getting into the career stories of former Ipswich Town players. Mark, how are you, mate? Yeah, good, thank you, mate. Good, it's nice to hear, mate. We've done done a few of these now, and this is obviously the final one before we go into Pastures New. More about that to come, but... Tonight we have a former player who made his debut against Norwich at Carrow Road at the ripe old age of 16. At the time, he became the club's youngest player to ever score a hat-trick at 17 years old. He has made a total of 490 professional appearances during his career across the Championship, League One and League Two. It's Dean Bowditch. Dino, how are you doing, mate? I'm all right, thank you very much. You well? Yeah, very well, mate. Very well. Tonight, I will start the questions, whereas Mark would normally... Uh, he'll come in a little later to concentrate on your career after the Tractor Boys. So to start, mate, thank you for sitting down with us, for, uh, first of all, for a chat. Sure. But before we talk about your professional career, I have a couple of questions in regards to your early life in football growing up. Take me back to your days as a young boy and how, you first, uh, how your first interaction with football came about. Did your parents have much of an impact of, on your love uh, of football as a child? Um, yeah, massively. I can't, I can't really deny it. It's, um, I've probably had those really pushy parents <laughs> that, we all, uh, <laughs> that we all see. And um, I think it helped that my brother, my brother's three years older than me, and he, um, he was a very good footballer as a, as a child. And when you're the younger one, you just want to emulate that, don't you? So, I mean, he, he was really what I looked up to. So whatever he'd done, I just tried to copy. Yes. Did you um, did you follow a team or did you go to many games, watch football on TV? Just talk us through your memories of that time in your life. Uh, Tottenham, so Spurs, Spurs are my team. I think as I as I became a professional, I kind of stopped actually supporting a team and just concentrated on the team I was almost playing with. Is I wasn't. I think our family was never kind of hardcore football fans, um, but we still went to go and watch games and stuff like that. So obviously being at White Hart Lane and watching some of the teams in the 90s and the early 2000s and that was quite was quite special but um you know it's it's always nice to go to stadiums and watch games as a fan but um when I did as a kid it just there was that fire in me I just thought you know one day I've got I've got to do this I've got to be a professional footballer is there a massive difference between uh, watching football as a fan and then watching it again as a player would you say yeah massively Massively, I think because when 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 you're a fan, um, you don't you don't know what it's obviously like to be on the pitch unless you've been on the pitch before, unless you've played the game. You know that it's really nice when you're kind of twenty rows up and you can see everything and like you know someone turns and gets tackled and you're like, what are you turning for there? And it's like you know, but when you're on the pitch, things just happen so quick. You know, and the best the best players in the world they're already two or three steps ahead. So. Yeah, massively. As soon as you become a player, you actually forgive people a lot more for their mistakes because you kind of understand it. Yeah, definitely. So just give us a little insight on how you came to, to play for Ipswich then. Um, so I played locally um, back in Essex just for like a local team. And um, back before Ipswich was an academy, <clears throat> it was an academy, it was a school of excellence. And they had sort of, sort of four or five different camps here, there and everywhere. And um, one of the scouts sort of was watching our team and just said to sort of a few of us, you know, come down to our school of excellence and um, sort of have a, have a few trials and stuff like that. And that was over in Brentwood. Yeah. So it's only obviously just down the A12. And uh, just literally within six months, it changed from a school of excellence into an academy. So what they've done is they just took, I suppose, the best of the crop from each sort of school of excellence and started the academy. Um, so, yeah, it's, I was kind of there from, from the get-go, really. Yeah, decent. So now we obviously come on to your professional career, uh, where you worked your way up through the ranks at Twitch Town. Um, now, in terms of debuts, it couldn't come much better than coming off the bench at Carrow Roads, um, obviously against Ipswich's fiercest rivals in Norwich City. Take me through what you were feeling before the game and how much warning you had before the actual game came to a head. Um, not a lot, really. Um, what basically happened about a week before the game, um, we had a few injuries in the first team and they started to kind of look down the pecking order who can come in and just either be in the squad or sit on the bench or something like that. And, and I remember at the time, the, the guys who were sort of a year or two above me were 
doing exams. So the ones that kind of they kind of earmarked as replacing them, um, they felt that their education was obviously more important. So then they looked down again, and the next one that was kind of doing all right in the sort of 16s, 17s was was me. Um, so they just said, you know, a week before the game, you know, come and train with the first team, and I was. I mean, my my career could have finished then, do you know what I mean? It's just like training with the likes of Jim Jilton and people like that was just incredible. So, um, and then to be in the squad and then to make the bench, um, yeah, and then to, <laughs> and then to what, what actually happened next was kind of, you know, it's, it's a little bit numb still. You can't really remember exactly what happened, but yeah, it was, um, it was pretty special. Can you remember going, obviously we won that game 2-0, um, but can you remember going back to school and, and, you know, talking to your mates about, you know, playing in the, the football league, that must have been brilliant. Yeah, it was, um, yeah, it's surreal, really. I didn't, I didn't really understand the magnitude of it. I think um, I understood the rivalry because as, as a kid going through the academy, we played Norwich numerous times and it was, you, you, you always had a bit of added spice in those games. And then, but the first team level was just a different kettle of fish. I mean, going to the game, police escorted, having stuff thrown at the bus, and you're 16 years old, like cowering under the table, like you know, it's kind of. <laughs> it, um, it was yeah, it was something else. But yeah, going back to school and your mates are kind of thinking, wow, like what have you just done? And and I didn't really understand it until you kind of um, you look back and you think actually that was quite a big achievement. Yeah, well, it's fair to say that your your town career got off to a terrific start. Um, most fans will, of course, remember you for that iconic hat trick you scored against Watford. Uh, they were all different types of goals, but the main thing was that Lenny Pisley and the Watford goal couldn't keep any of them out. I think even helped one of them in, <laughs> if I remember rightly. What was yeah. the the moment like for you scoring a hat trick? I mean, at seventeen years old. Yeah. Um, again, it's it's kind of um, well, as I was coming through the academy, I obviously played up front. I was a striker. I, I wanted to score goals. And, but then to get your chance in the first team to be live on Sky, which, you know, back then we didn't have social media. There wasn't loads of games being shown on Sky. So to have that opportunity to play in front of millions of people, it kind of, um, you know, some people you could, it can be daunting. And, you know, you just got that buzz, that extra kind of, that extra little bit. Hang on a minute. So, yeah, that extra little bit of spice. And, um, yeah, I just obviously went on. Obviously, Lenny Pidgeley, you know, I hope, Hopefully the money I gave him is he's still going <laughs> strong. And uh, he did give me a couple of goals, but, you know, you've always got to be there to score them. And, you know, just to be picking that ball out of the net and, and giving it a big old big old kiss and a hat-trick at Portman Road, you know, my dreams have come true, really. Yeah, obviously stuff of dreams as you're coming through the ranks, I'd imagine. But despite obviously coming a, a fan favourite, unfortunately, as time went on at Portman Road, you began to suffer with injuries that probably curtailed your involvement with the first team. For someone who had hit the ground run and to all of a sudden find himself out of the team, talk me through that, you know, frustrating period. Um, yeah, it was, it was kind of, it was hard because um, when I actually look back at it, I was probably given my opportunity way too young, you know, and you, you, you end up having a lot of expectation on your shoulders and, and I, I couldn't really deal with that mentally. You know, I, I, I struggled with the kind of, um, yeah, like you said, the um, everyone expected you to do so well, so you just you felt that pressure from from everyone really, and and I didn't deal with that well. Whereas some people, I mean, I remember at the time Wayne Rooney when he was kind of coming into the team at Everton, you know, he was only sort of sort of half a year older than me, and you think of the head on his shoulders, you know, like and how how well he took all the criticism and everything, you know, he just burst onto the scene and he was just ready for it. I wasn't really ready, you know, and. And so when, when time went on and I sort of suffered a few little niggles and what probably wasn't fully physically developed, ready for first team football, you know, I found myself out of the team. I mean, it, it was during the period you obviously had the opportunities to get further first team football with a series of loan spells between uh, 2005 and 2008. Um, take me back through some of those loan spells, like, you know, the likes of Burnley, Wickham, Brighton, Northampton, Brentford. I mean... You did. It was after that period that you did actually have some success. But if you just just give us some kind of idea what happened whilst you're at those clubs. Um, well, my biggest thing was because I wasn't getting the opportunity at Ipswich. You know, I'd be knocking on the door and saying, "Look, I I need to play." You know, my you know my my ambition as a kid was just to play football, and I didn't want to just be sitting in the reserves and and not really 
sort of improving as a player and and um I just decided you know I need to go and play play for something you know going in, going into a game thinking you know we want three points you know there's there's nothing better than winning those three points and the final whistle and I just needed that so every time I had the opportunity to go on loan I did so obviously when you look back you think oh he's had quite a few loans but it was only through a desire of wanting to play you know it wasn't it wasn't because they were sort of shipping me out all the time it was just a case of look I want to play I want to play I want to play so I think that kind of kind of worked well for me in the end because when when eventually I found a club that I settled you know I was I always had that desire just to keep playing and keep winning games yeah so at the end of the 2008-9 season uh your time here came to an end um, when Ipswich released your contract. Um, how can you sum up your time in Suffolk as a whole? I mean, I loved it. You know, I, I was there from 10, 10 up until I was 21. You know, it's kind of, um, they, they taught me everything coming through the academy into the first team. You know, they taught me everything that I, I took on in through my career and I'm forever grateful for that. And I'm, I'm still an Ipswich Town fan. You know, I'm a tractor boy, so... Um, even though I might not be from the area, I, I, I actually love the football club. So um, when I did eventually sort of um, leave, you know, it was it was the right decision. You know, I would never sort of um, regret the decision for them to say, you know, it's time for you to move on because actually it worked out pretty well for me in the end. So obviously after your time um, at Ipswich, I'm just going to look at your career now. Um, so obviously you took that opportunity of a fresh start elsewhere. Uh, with both hands when you joined Yeovil Town uh, in that summer. Um, that season obviously brought new confidence for you, I imagine, uh, where you scored on your debut, uh, you finished as a club's top goal scorer. I mean, sort of take me through your memories you know, of, your, of your time at Yeovil. Um, like you said, I scored on my debut. I needed, I needed a fresh start, like scored on my debut. I got injured on my debut. What happened? It was a freak injury. Uh, ended up dislocating my shoulder. Um, was out for three months but still came back and finished top goal scorer um, but the type of club that it was you know we had a small squad um, not a massive budget and it was a case of when you're fit you played you know and and I needed that when I was just saying about wanting to play you know I went to a club which gave me that opportunity you know Terry Skiverton was just so supportive of me and he put a lot of trust on my shoulders and um, and he just said go you know go and be what you want to be and go and score some goals and and we were we were battling down at the bottom of the table so to, to score 10 goals at a relegation like you know a team that's struggling down at the bottom I thought was 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 pretty good in that first season and then I went and got another 15 goals the next season and and helped keep the team up again so it's yeah it was I loved it down there and managed to sort of um, resurrect my career. So yeah obviously you know having that opportunity to resurrect that career uh, you then obviously went on to MK Dons uh, where you enjoyed even more of a fruitful sort of period there as well in your in your career personally, as well as gaining team promotions collectively. So, um, you know, sort of take me through your time there and why it was so special for you personally. Because obviously, you know, you're a bit of a legend at MK these days. So, sort of <laughs> sort of take your take me through that sort of period of your career. I think legend's a bit strong, but yeah, <laughs> I appreciate you. Um, yeah, I mean, when when I left the Oval, it was kind of like it was a uh, we was in the same league as MK, but they were just pushing for promotion. They had a brand of football that just really suited me down to ground. And um, Carl Robinson was a you know fantastic manager, helped me on and off the pitch. And you know went on to get over 200 appearances and scored just shy of 50 goals. And um, it was just a club that I think it gets a lot of obviously a lot of stick for the history of the football club and. There's not a lot of fans outside of MK Don's fans that actually like the club, but the, the actual people within the club, you, you ask anyone, you know, it's such a good club to be a part of and they really do look after their players and, you know, not just on the pitch, but off the pitch, you know, I felt just at home there. So you touched upon there with the sort of the MK Don's, the Wimbledon connection. Was, was that ever a bit difficult for you as a player just to sort of be a part of or do you just sort of just get on with it? No, I'll be perfectly honest. When I first signed for the club, I didn't really understand it. You know, I didn't really get where it come from and, um, you know, the actual, the real rivalry behind it. I think it was once I was there for a few months and and you started to hear little things and you started to do a bit more research into it. And you actually think, OK, I can see why, you know, there's such a bit of rivalry between the two clubs. And as time as time has gone on, I think that's kind of settled a little bit. But um, 
it will always be there. But then that's, you know, that's a rivalry. That's a bit of rivalry. And, you know, we did come across them at one point during my time. And um, our first meeting was brilliant. You know, we won the game, but it was, it was, I mean, the atmosphere was just incredible. So to have that rivalry with another club is, is, is only a good thing, really. So obviously during your time at MK Dons, uh, you were deployed uh, more as a, sometimes a wide midfielder rather than a striker that we all kind of know you from your time at Ipswich. Um, did this, this bother you or were you just sort of happy to be playing in that, in that winning team? Um, no, it didn't bother me because when I, when I, before I signed for the football club, Carl Robinson said to me, you know, the formation that we play, we play like a 4-2-3-1 um, and I see you playing in any one of the four positions up, up front. And actually over my course and my time there, I played in every single position. Um, but I mainly played on the left-hand side. And the reason why he played me there was because naturally, even though I was a striker, naturally I would always drop into pockets and play as like a number 10, like a false 10. Um, and so he started playing me out on the left and I'd find myself just in little pockets, you know, and causing all sorts of carnage. Um, and he kind of thought, actually, this is probably his best position, you know, cutting in on my right foot, getting shots away and playing little neat one-twos and... Um, that was kind of suited me down to the ground. So he actually ended up kind of making me into that left side of midfield player that I sort of went on to play many games. So after that sort of period, obviously you played under Carl Robinson there, um, had a really good time there, obviously, but you then left St- uh, Stadium MK in, in 2017. Um, do, do you think it was the right time for you personally to move on or did you feel you could stay and potentially sort of fight for a, a, first, a first team place? Well, my choice. <laughs> <laughs> it weren't my choice. I mean, if I if I could still be there now, I would. Yeah. Um, we had a change of manager, and um, he, you know, like any manager that comes in, they've got their own opinions and their own kind of um, ways they want to take the club forward. And I wasn't part of that, so loved my time there. But it was time to move on from that point of view, um, and went on to sign, <clears throat> obviously for Northampton. And um, there was reasons why I signed there, and I don't know if you want to sort of talk about that. And it's basically because of being not so far down the road and there was so much going on outside of football that, yeah, I won't go into too much, but I wanted to be local. And when they came in and said, you know, we'll give you a two-year contract, I kind of just, I jumped at the opportunity and um, it didn't quite work out for me in the end, but it, it was um, it was all with the intentions of being able to be local to my, to my, my family. And um, uh, unfortunately, the football side of it just didn't quite work out the way I would have liked it to have. Yeah, so that's kind of the sort of next question I was going to ask, really. I mean, with, you know, your spell at Northampton, um, you know, obviously leaving MK Dons, um, you know, it must have been quite difficult anyway, leaving such a club that you had such affiliation with. Um, yeah. But then, obviously, being at Northampton, you then went on, on loan to Stevenage, but then soon found yourself without a club as well. Um, just sort of take me through your time there and, you know, how difficult was it for you then? Um, yeah, it was hard because I signed with all the good intentions of, of playing, you know, and um, I literally, Justin Edinburgh, God rest him, you know, he, he signed me and um, within a few games I was out of the squad and I went knocking on his door and I said, you know, what's going on? And um, he just, like, was honest and just said, I don't think you've been good enough, you know, and I just thought, okay, well, you know, why did you sign me kind of thing? You know, if you didn't feel like I was, I was where I should be and... Um, and then it just kind of, he, he unfortunately got, well, got the sack. And then J- Justin Edinburgh, uh, Jimmy Floyd, Husband came in and brought in another 13 players. And I found myself just training on my own and not really being a part of it. Um, and then I kind of started, started to lose the love of the game, really. And didn't really, um, I didn't really know if I wanted to carry on. Uh, and then Stephen sort of came in for me in January and said, just come, you know, come on loan to us for the rest of the season. And it was actually Darren Sol that, that got that fire back in my belly to carry on and say, actually, no, I do still love this game and I'm going to try and play for as long as I can. So after leaving there then, with the, with the retirement, was it, was it on your mind or did you want to continue? I mean, you, that was kind of your last professional club. So yeah. just talk me through that kind of period. Well, <laughs> being, being released from Northampton coincided with the birth of my son and we'd been waiting a long time for him. So kind of, I had, I had two options really. Um, one was to try and continue to be a professional footballer or one or the other one was to spend quality time with my son. So, you know, I took, I took the, uh, 
um, the choice of being with my son, which I, I will never, ever regret. I'll never get that time back. And I thoroughly enjoyed all that time with him. And I knew it would hamper my chances of carrying on as a pro. Um, but I didn't care. I really, really couldn't care because that was more important to me. So, you know, I, I, I loved my time. And, um, you know, I will probably won't ever play for a pro club again. I'll play sort of semi-pro or whatever it may be for as long as my legs will let me. Um, but yeah, that choice was was a really, really straightforward, easy one for me. Yeah, I think at the end of the day, there's there's bigger things than football at the end of the day, and one of them obviously is family. So, um, you know, that that obviously takes us up to the, to the end of your professional career. Um, but with would, would you ever say never? I mean, you know, as your son gets older, maybe would you know would you go back potentially as a In, as a pro footballer? What it's back into pro? Yeah. Oh yeah, if someone offered me a contract, I'd be right there. I'd do right, I would. But it's yeah, it's. It, I think the, the stresses and the strains of being a pro footballer. I think people underestimate actually how difficult it is on your on your mind as well and your body. And I think um, when I went and played sort of semi pro for a bit, you know, actually only training once a week was was oh, was bliss for my body really. Um, so yeah, but going back to being a pro, it wouldn't just be. Um, difficult mentally but physically but yeah if someone gave me the opportunity I'd snap the rander. So you have obviously been uh, continuing to sort of play partly football um, so before the premature end of this season's campaign uh, you could be seen turn out for the Eastern Counties League uh, Premier Division side Stowmarket Town. Yeah. Um, again you scored on your debut um, so <laughs> but unfortunately you announced that you were leaving there on, on Twitter the other day um, yeah. So, what what are your thoughts? Was it just the sort of family sort of reasons again, or you know, is it just maybe time just just to maybe not focus on football for now? Yeah, it was. I mean, I had that time at home, and I think my wife just started to get annoyed with me and said, like, you need to go and play football for a bit, you know, get out of the house. Um, and then Stone Market, it was a friend of mine actually, just said, you know, have a little chat with our manager and see, you know, what they can what they can offer, and they were flying in the league anyway. Um, and they, they they made it worth my while to go down there. So, you know, I was happy, you know, being in a in a change room that was, you know, they were buzzing, they were a great group of lads. Um, but it got it, it was ended prematurely, you know, and you know, rightly or wrongly, the way that the seasons have all been ended for the non league. But um it was just it's it's devastating for the club because they were so far ahead and they were just about to be crowned champions and you know, it's just unfortunately the way it is. But you know, it came came towards sort of the end of my contract there, and I and I just felt it was right between me and the club to say, actually, you know, thank you very much for the opportunity, but you know, I'm going to sort of look elsewhere. But I wish you all the best in the future. So, looking back on that career, then uh, obviously starting off at Ipswich, uh, right through to kind of the present day with your last uh, semi-pro club. Um, if you had to pick one or two highlights from your career collectively and personally, obviously, um, yeah. what, what would they be? Um, Making my debut for Ipswich, you know, if 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 my career had ended then, then I wouldn't I wouldn't have, you know I wouldn't have uh, I wouldn't have worried too much, you know, making my debut at Carrow Road, you know, and, and setting up two goals to win the game, you can't really ask too much more than that. Um, but from from a from another collective point of view, you know, getting promoted with that team at MK Dons was, um, you know, we had an incredible team, um, and I played a huge part in that promotion towards the end of the season and. Um, you know, we yeah, we celebrated in you know, for weeks to come after that, and it was just one of those one of those moments that I'll never ever forget. And that's why I feel like I'm at home at, at this football club, you know, because I'm back there, sort of uh, on the charity side of things, and it's it's something that you know I'll, I want to give back something to the club because they put so much trust in me as a player. Yeah, definitely. Um, so from your from your career, um, is there a certain player you have played with uh, that's caught caught your eye during your career, or you know, obviously you've played with Deli Ali at MK Dons. Uh, yeah. You know, could you sense from then he had a, the quality to be a future Premier League player and obviously, you know, go on to play for England? I'm just going to put you on charge because I just noticed my, uh, my battery's about to run out here. <laughs> Poor preparation, that, and that. I'll just, I'll just sit here for a bit, you don't mind, do you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Deli Ali, yeah. There's no, there's no, like, contest, really. He's, um, I mean... I played with many, many very, very good players. You know, like I said, Jim Jilton at the start. I mean, I used to love playing with Tommy Miller. Tommy Miller was, was yeah, he was quality. I absolutely loved him in my town days. But Delhi was just, he, I mean, he came into the team 
as a kid and and we didn't actually think too much of him we thought he was he wasn't you know he was all right but he weren't great and then he came back after summer and it was just like who's this kid you know he's just an absolute machine and you couldn't get near him you couldn't couldn't keep up with him it was just and he just went from you know from <laughs> leaps and bounds in the straight into the premier league and uh you know, I think he surprised a lot of people once he got there as well. We just he just took the world by storm. So fair play to him, and I'm 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 very pleased. I was able to share the picture of him many times. Yeah. So from from, from players to uh, managers that you've played under, um, you've obviously touched upon the likes of in the latter part of your career, Justin Edinburgh and Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank, and then at the start was Joe Royal, Jim Gilton, and then in the middle of the career was obviously Carl Robinson, who brought you to MK Dons for that successful period. Um, is it is there one name that stands out to you uh, from that list that you've played under the most and that's you know either helped you or you've enjoyed playing under? Um, I think it's I think I'll, I just want to say quickly something on Joe Royal. I think when when I was at Ipswich, I didn't really appreciate him as much as I should have done. Um, you know, he he put a lot of um, expectation on my shoulders, but it wasn't because he was he was being like you know he was pressuring me it was just the case of he just knew sort of how good I could be and I kind of took it up I kind of took it harshly I thought he was actually being harsh on me but actually I look back and he was a fantastic manager you know man manager I thought he was a, you know, when I've sort of had other managers I realized actually how good he is um but Carl Robinson for me Carl Robinson took me from being sort of a, a decent footballer to a very good one at MK and um he he not just on the pitch, but off the pitch. I thought he, he got everything spot on. So, yeah, Carl Robinson for me just stood out. Yeah. Um, so, obviously, we've sort of touched upon the way from football, um, obviously, with a young family now. But what else do you get up to uh, in your spare time? You obviously mentioned a little bit with MK Dons and the charity sort of stuff. Is there anything else yeah. you get up to? Um, so, at the moment, obviously, not a lot. <laughs> you know, as, as we all are, we're, yeah. not really allowed, we're not really allowed to do a lot. Um, so it's kind of a very strange times, but it will pass. We will get past it, and we will all come back stronger, I'm sure. But before we all got into this situation, um, like I said, I was part of the Sports and Education Trust at MK Dons, and um, doing a bit on that side, trying to help raise money for the for 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 us because we're self efficient, and just to be back in the door at MK Dons. You now I was well respected there as a player, and and hopefully I can give something back to them sort of for for the long term. So. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad to be back there. And but everything else, really, no, not 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 particularly a lot. I've got a, a nine month old who keeps me on my toes, and he's he's just started moving now, which is a nightmare. Um, but yeah, we're we're at home and we're we're sort of enjoying it as much as we can and waiting for when we can get back to normality. So, as you spoke about at the beginning of the interview, um, watching football as a child, you know, growing up with your brother Ben, you know, sort of Tottenham and stuff like that. Uh, clearly had a bit of a helping hand on your professional career. Um, you know, now a father as yourself, you know, obviously your son only nine months old, but, you know, what, what experiences can you share, you know, with him maybe when he grows up? Do you think it will be similar to your upbringing? Um, you know, sort of maybe talk, talk me through that. Yeah, I think if I look at my upbringing, I had a very, what I would consider quite a normal upbringing. You know, I, I look at some some players who have lost parents or, single mums and you know struggle to get to training some days and they 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 work they work and they work because they know they've had a bit of a rough ride and they have that kind of that extra little bit in them that just has been embedded in from a young age and I feel like I've just had a normal upbringing really really supportive family um you know have supported me through yeah thick and thin really and um I think you know Albie growing up will have that same support and love and you know it would just be a case of whatever you want to do son you go and do it and um we'll we'll be back in you all the way and I think luckily for me I, I, I went with something that I ended up doing pretty well at and whatever he chooses to do we'll support him no matter what. So who do you think he's going to be supporting when he grows up then do you think he's going to be an MK Dons fan, it's his fan, Tottenham fan? I hope he's an MK Dons fan you know I'm a big I'm a big believer in supporting your local team and um you know I hopefully you can go back and see all the pictures on the wall of me so <laughs> <laughs> you know, if, if he wants to be if he wants to be a fan of someone else, he, he can do. But yeah, I'll try and encourage him to support his local team. So I think that's important. Yeah, definitely. So Dino, look, we're coming to the end of the interview tonight. Obviously, you've been you've been working on BT Radio Suffolk this this season, following some of the town games. Yeah, having played in a team that successfully got promoted from League One to the Championship, 
what do you think are the issues that have troubled town this season and what could they possibly do to improve going forward? <clears throat> um, like you said, I've watched a few games um, and heard, obviously read a lot of things about, you know, how a lot of, there's been a lot of tinkering going on and, and you know, changes of formation, changes of personnel. And I think for me, when, when we got promoted, we had... Um, we had a back six, you know, the goalkeeper, the back four and the two holding midfielders and they didn't change. They didn't change all season. You know, they were solid. They got to know each other. They, they knew, you know, how to cover each other and they, um, you know, they'd throw their bodies on the line no matter what. But the other four, the ones that would go and win the games, you know, as in your, your goal scorers, you know, they would be rotated, but they would kind of, you know, they would accept it because they knew that the ones that were coming in were doing the business. So, it's just a case of making sure that your players are happy that the ones that are being rotated, you know, understand why. Um, and it isn't just kind of thrown upon them, you know, the, the worst thing you can do with a team is just keep tinkering, but like, you know, not keeping your players happy. So yeah, it's, it's a tough job. I wouldn't want to be a manager. I know that much, <laughs> but it is, uh, it's one of those things that I think if you can get a team that's, um, you know, a bit more secure, then I think you'll find that Ipswich, especially, you know, especially with their sort of fans supporting their history, they should be flying. That's brilliant, Dino. I just want to thank you for coming on tonight. Obviously, this is the final interview that we're doing, so we're really happy to have you on. All the yeah. best for the future, mate. Hope it goes well with MK Dons and, and obviously with Albie as well when he gets older. So, uh, yeah, just take care, mate, all right? Cheers. Appreciate it. I've loved Appreciate it. Dean. Cheers, mate. Cheers. Thank you. Take Cheers. care.